some parts of this review will be uh, unmastered. I can't review like this. Not so good a review, man, without your uh, yellow shirt here, huh? What am I supposed to wear instead? Oh boy, I'm wearing it. I'm putting, putting it on. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you so much. I'm wearing it now. I guess I'll just put this on. Fits me better than you. <laughs> mm. It's like a glove. Mm. Mm. Hi, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Kendrick Lamar album, EP, Thing, Untitled, Unmastered. Compton rapper Kendrick Lamar, hands down, no question, I will debate you, has the best batting average in rap right now. Section 80, Good Kid Mad City, To Pimp a Butterfly, every project he comes out with gets bigger, better, more ambitious, more mind-bending. And he's had a fantastic year, he's won a ton of Grammys, a lot of television performances. So of course, I am psyched for a new out-of-the-blue project, but He's clearly not dropping something on that to pimp a butterfly level. Between the very blobby black cover and the untitled tracks and the title Untitled Unmastered, I like that wordplay there. But Kendrick is clearly telling us that what we're about to embark on are some b-sides, some leftovers with a kind of muddy recording. Either tracks that were written and were conceptualized but for some reason or another didn't end up on To Pimp a Butterfly, or songs that Kendrick didn't want to release, uh, studio versions of that he had performed live that people knew of their existence, or uh, afterthoughts from To Pimp a Butterfly. Songs that he wanted to get down to tape and maybe not clean up so much for a commercial release, but just get out there in some way, shape, or form just before he moves on to his next sound, his next project, his next concept, which potentially these songs would not fit within. So sure, while this project may be sort of a loose collection of odds and ends, I think what this thing proves here is that the past few years have been such a creative time for Kendrick that even the, the, the extras from this period are worth sharing and when assembled they create a pretty solid project. Now this thing is 35 minutes, doesn't overstay its welcome, and Kendrick with his collaborating musicians create these interesting fusions of grimy hip-hop, jazz, soul, funk. Now each track on this thing delivers some interesting ideas, has some cool vibes to it, but each of them are, I don't know, maybe a little structurally half-baked, maybe there are some abrupt endings here, or some sudden or messy transitions. But again, I guess that's kind of the point. If these tracks were cleaned up and groomed to the point where they were on that To Pimp a Butterfly level, this project would seem kind of redundant. And I don't think just putting out another To Pimp a Butterfly is the reason for this project. I think Kendrick is purposefully giving us that experience in the raw. He's removing sort of the, the safety net that a lot of artists put underneath themselves with flashy production and very precise editing, and instead he's giving us these instrumental performances and these extra tracks with a very live in the moment sound. Sort of in the same way that we got that live version of the song I off of To Pimp a Butterfly instead of the very clean prissed up studio version. But the tracks on this thing are even messier than that. Uh, still, the chaos and that in the moment feel, that organic feel of these songs is still really enjoyable. If these untitled tracks are anything, it's a continuation of that To Pimp a Butterfly experience, but just giving it to us at a different angle. On the first untitled track here, I love the the groaning bass line and kind of that boom bap drum flavor. It brings me right back to the 90s. And just to sort of add that jazz flavor in there, there are these sparkling keyboard embellishments and what sounds kind of like a dusty Mellotron wheezing away in the background. And I love how the instrumentation here just comes together in a way where it sounds like a live jam. One thing I want to say about Kendrick's verse on this opening track is that the the imagery seems really violent, almost dystopian, and it seems almost like uh, it, it it seems like uh, maybe a riot is going on or some kind of unrest. It's like Kendrick is maybe describing the world that was described in sort of that whole Tupac interview 
uh, where people eventually rise up because they're fed up and they feel disenfranchised. Maybe this is sort of the world that Kendrick is reflecting on in this track. And plus there are some moments on here where I presume when I read into the lyrics that he might have written his verses after the dates that are marked on these untitled tracks. Like one moment on here where he's talking about how he gave us to pimp a butterfly, where I mean, essentially is he sort of talking about uh, this past the date of the release of To Pimp a Butterfly, or is, is he uh, recording this before the release and sort of predicting that the album is going to be good? On the second untitled track here, uh, I'm blown away. This track is fantastic. I love how it's a slow-mo sort of trap flavor with the rattling hi-hats, but then it's got these wandering saxes and this really milky, heavy, enveloping bass. It is legitimately a, an intoxicating rap song, and not intoxicating in the way that uh, Future's music is intoxicating. Certainly Future's music does shoot for that vibe, but I feel like Kendrick takes that even further down that rabbit hole. And he embodies this intoxication vocally as well, as he's uh, sort of cracking in his inflection. As he styrofoam. Plus the way the instrumentation just kind of washes into some jazzy keys right at the end of this song reminds me of To Pimp a Butterfly as well. Another thing I want to say about this track is that it's not just woozy, it's not just intoxicating, there's a serious darkness and sort of danger to this track. There's an edge to it. Uh, while it does seem like Kendrick is in maybe a, a blissful or somewhat inebriated state, it's uh, also an unsettling track too. Also with how he brings up racial epithets in this track, like Jigaboo's, uh, it's it's like these racial stereotypes are coming to life in a nightmare for him in this track. And the seventh untitled track here is also a very woozy, intoxicating moment as Kendrick is dropping lines mentioning a series of things, talking about this won't get you high as this, this won't get you high as this, which actually makes for a really catchy refrain that uh, I wish actually made it onto the album. Levitate, levitate, levitate. However, after this track, we see some of the longest and most patience testing details tours on the entire record. And I get that this is a B-sides record, it's not going to be clean. And yeah, while this um, little bit of audio over here might be uh, maybe a little overly long, it does display Kendrick, uh, you know, with a decent singing voice over here. He can hold his own and, uh, and a good sense of humor as well. Uh, at this point, it's like the project has turned into almost like a a documentary we're being given a very intimate moment uh, from the recording sessions or I guess you know sort of the, uh, the the creative mind that was behind this record on the fifth untitled track here the instrumentation is absolutely stunning the piano and the horns on this thing sound very gorgeous and these little flourishes of horns and piano kind of alternate with this really tense bass line Kendrick comes through with this show-stopping flow and delivery. Not that it's super fast or technical or anything like that, but he just has so much passion. Hearing him in the raw like this, he's just a different animal than he is uh, on a cleaner, just very, again, prissed up studio recording, which is also evidenced in that Kendrick, when he takes his songs from his albums and performs them live with the musicians he collaborates with, he completely reimagines them. So even if the tracks here aren't produced as well as they could have been, uh, the ideas that are presented still shine through and still read as incredibly creative. And not only is Kendrick's delivery pretty stunning on this track, but his verse on here is uh, pretty interesting too. Of course, there were some religious themes that came up on To Pimp a Butterfly uh, on numerous tracks, uh, but here uh, Kendrick seems to be more overt with them than ever. Uh, not that he's, you know, sort of citing biblical verses here or anything, but the picture he seems to be painting is his mindset is very dark, it's very conflicted when he turns his face away or he turns his focus away from religion and God and I guess the righteous path, or at least that's how I interpret this track. The sixth untitled track here is a really smooth, jazzy ballad that features some guest vocals from CeeLo. Uh, the instrumentation uh, sort of reminds me of one of the few interlude tracks off of To Pimp a Butterfly. I could see how uh, if this song had landed onto the album, it might be a little bit redundant, but I will say uh, 
uh, instrumentally, melodically, and vocally too, because I like CeeLo on this track a lot. I would have preferred this track to one of the interludes already on the record if instead of those tracks, this one had made it on and gotten the same studio treatment. Two more tracks I want to mention, of course, the third untitled track, a song that you may have heard Kendrick perform on the Colbert Report before he landed on the late night circuit, the What Does the White Man Say, What Does the Black Man Say track. Uh, but on this track, he sort of dives into other races and I think tries to paint lyrically these cultural stereotypes and mindsets that come along with these skin colors, uh, at least according to him. And uh, the, the most interesting verse of which I thought was the final one where the white man is looking for uh, a cut of the money Kendrick is making for the music that he's selling, sort of slapping that 1099 price tag on his albums. And finally, the closing track is a synth punk jam with a, a, a vibe similar to that of these walls, but maybe a little bit more uh, uh, uppity and energetic. And uh, the track's essentially about money, uh, talking about blue faces, the blue faces that are featured on the new bills uh, that we've come out with in the US. Uh, really, you know, interesting, uh, wordplay, descriptive imagery there of the money, uh, sort of going from green to blue, and, uh, you know, just kind of a, another theme of making it success, fame, money, 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 that also turned up onto Pimp a Butterfly. I like this project a lot. It's very much a fan project. If Kendrick hasn't wowed you on Good Kid, Mad City, and to Pimp a Butterfly, I don't think he's gonna do it here. So I think this project is good, but there is part of me that has my reservations because uh, as a complete piece, it's very messy, it's all over the place. I think Kendrick did a good job of sort of marketing this thing effectively. Drop the title, drop the track titles, let it be very clear to the audience that this is not just another commercial release. This is something sort of on the side, it's a detour. And as a detour, I think this project works really well. In a way, this thing is like an epilogue to the To Pippa Butterfly era of Kendrick's career. And I don't really have any complaints about it other than the very uh, sort of glaring shortcomings of the production and the recording and the assembly and the structures of these songs, flaws that Kendrick and company already knew were in there when releasing this thing. Um, you know, I, I was going to play it low-key with this project. Uh, going into it, I didn't feel all too impressed with the sound, but when you dive past the fact that this thing is a little lo-fi, there's really not much more you can uh, attack it with in terms of shortcomings. I mean, there is still some incredible instrumental performances on here, some good writing, some great concepts, uh, which are pretty fleshed out when the songs actually, you know, sort of push past that two-minute mark. It seems even when Kendrick is coming through with something that uh, uh, isn't his best, it's still pretty great. Kind of feeling a decent to strong eight on this thing. Bah! Position! Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You the best? You the best? What should I review next? Hit that like if you like! Which you should. Like this shit! Kendrick Lamar, Untitled Unmastered, forever.